Hi friends, I'm Uma Shankar Pandey and this is the Dr. USP channel. Survey research is a very important instrument to get insights into the opinions, beliefs and attitudes of individuals and groups across various fields. But a survey research is as good as its instrument. It's very important to frame questions correctly to get the right kind of responses for your objectives. And it is also important to understand the pitfalls that distort these responses. There are questions of pre-testing and validity to understand whether the questions actually measure the constructs that they intend to measure. Let us explore mastering survey question design in this video. Survey research provides very important numerical data to draw important statistical inferences. Survey questions could be used to find out objective information and also subjective information from the respondents. There could be behavior questions. If we are interested in behavior, we would formulate questions to establish what people do. The focus of belief questions is on establishing what people think is true. Knowledge questions are formulated to establish the accuracy of their beliefs. Attitude questions try to establish what they think is desirable. Attribute questions are designed to obtain information about the respondent's characteristics. It's important to begin with a clear detailed list of question objectives along with an analysis plan outlining how the data will be used. A common mistake in survey design is when the researcher skips the critical step of turning an objective into a well thought out question. Instead, they simply phrase the objective as a question. By aligning each proposed question with the objectives, you can spot weaknesses in the objectives themselves. Every question you should ask should be related to the service objectives. If you find that you've written a question that is not obviously related to one of your objectives, ask yourself what you intend to do with the data collected from the question. There could be open-ended questions or closed-ended questions. Open-ended questions are like why do you prefer product A to product B? Write answer in your own words. In the pre-coded open question, the interviewer is provided codes for the products. The closed questions has a list of options which the respondent has to choose from. The open-ended approach allows respondents to provide answers beyond what the researcher anticipated. However, the wide range of responses can make the data difficult to analyze. The more focused the question and clearer the expected response, the easier the analysis becomes. Answers tend to be more reliable and valid when a list of options is provided. Good question has these characteristics. It is clear, concise and free from ambiguous terms or complex language. Respondents should be able to understand the question without needing further explanation. The question should be directly relevant to the research objective and meaningful to the respondent. Irrelevant or off-topic questions can lead to disinterest or confusion. Avoid leading wording. A good question is neutral and does not lead respondents to answer in a particular way. Biased or leading questions can skew the data. If the question offers response options, they should be balanced to include all reasonable choices without biasing responses toward one side. There is always a social desirability bias. A good question avoids phrasing that may push respondents to give answers that they think are more socially acceptable rather than their true opinion or behavior. Double barreled question. A question that asks about two different things at the same time, making it unclear which part the respondent is answering. For example, do you think the government should improve healthcare and education? A double negative question is a question that uses two negative terms which can confuse respondents and make it difficult to understand the intended meaning. Do you disagree that the company should not reduce employee benefits is an example. Implicit negative question is a question where the negative aspect is implied rather than stated directly, which can lead to confusion or biased responses. How often do you avoid using public transportation is implicit negative.
The primary aim of perception questions is often to position responses along a clear single continuum. For descriptive questions, this continuum could be defined by dimensions like hot to cold, slow to fast or frequent to infrequent. Respondents are then asked to place themselves or the subject of the rating along that scale. Likert scale questions are widely used in questionnaires to measure respondents' attitudes, opinions or perceptions on a given subject. These questions present a statement and ask individuals to indicate their level of agreement or effectiveness, typically on a 5 or 7 point scale ranging from strong approval to strong disapproval. This format allows for rich data collection providing insights into varying degrees of sentiment rather than simple binary yes-no responses. A semantic or a differential scale provides pairs of statements and one is expected to choose it on a continuum. This is generally on a 5 or a 7 point scale. A Gutman scale is one of the earliest types of multi-item scales. Here's an example. Can you walk across a small room? So the number of yeses here provides different intensities. The problem with scales, the first is order effect. The sequence in which questions or response options are present that can influence how respondents answer, potentially leading to biased results. For instance, people may favor options listed later depending on how their attention is directed. Acquiescence. Some respondents tend to agree with statements regardless of their actual opinions, can distort the results by inflating positive responses or masking true feelings. Respondents may choose the midpoint or neutral option to avoid extreme answers, especially when unsure or indifferent. This results in skewed data. Often, individuals respond to questions in a repetitive or patterned way, for example, choosing B most often. It suggests disengagement or lack of attention. This reduces the reliability and validity of the data collected. Framing is extremely important. Consider this. People were far more supportive of increased spending for those with low incomes compared to when it was framed as welfare. Similarly, half the American population would support not allowing communists to speak publicly, while only 20% would forbid it. First-hand experience. Survey research is strongest when asking about people's first-hand experiences. Avoid asking about second-hand information. Avoid hypothetical questions. Avoid asking respondents about causality. Avoid asking respondents to solve complex problems. Wording. Word survey questions so that every respondent is answering the same question. Choose words that all respondents understand in the same way. Provide definitions for unclear terms. Ensure the time period referred to by a question is unambiguous. If the subject is too complex for one question, break it into multiple questions. The order of question is extremely important. Commence with questions that respondents will enjoy answering. Firstly, these should be easily answered questions. Go from easy to more difficult questions. Go gradually. Go from concrete to abstract questions. Start with concrete questions and then go to abstract. Group questions into sections, similar questions together. This helps structure the questionnaire and provides a better flow. Make use of filter questions to ensure that questions are relevant to the respondents. Do not start with demographic questions such as age, marital status, etc. Pre-testing helps identify potential issues before the survey is distributed to a larger audience. Key elements include clarity of questions where the wording is evaluated to ensure clarity. It also checks for question order effects ensuring that earlier questions do not influence the later ones. The pre-test evaluates the length of the survey. Response options are examined to ensure that all possible answers are covered and mutually exclusive. One drawback of explicitly including a don't know option is that it may lead to an increase in such responses. When respondents are asked about their first-hand experiences or feelings, aim for fewer don't know responses. If the questions involve opinions or perceptions about matters beyond their direct experience, 
A don't know response can provide valuable information. Validity measures whether or not the answers are valid measures of what the researchers are trying to measure. Since we can't directly observe people's thoughts or feelings, we infer them through measurements like surveys or tests. These measurements are assumed to reflect what we are trying to study. If they behave in expected ways, this supports their accuracy. The process of checking if these measurements truly capture the intended concepts is known as construct validity. Statistical methods like exploratory or confirmatory factor analysis can help determine if the questions group together in ways that align with the theoretical constructs. Criterion validity and evaluates how well the survey predicts or correlates with an outcome or external criterion. Compare the survey results with those of an existing validated survey that measures the same thing. Predictive validity check whether the results from the questionnaire can predict future outcomes or behaviors. External validity it assesses whether the results from the survey can be generalized to a larger population. A representative sampling can ensure that the survey accurately reflects the population you're trying to study. Test the survey with different groups or at different times to check for consistency in results. Reliability is about whether the survey produces consistent results over time and across different conditions. Test retest reliability administer the same survey to the same group after some time to check for consistency. Use Cronbach's alpha to check the correlation between different questions measuring the same construct. Split half reliability divide the survey into two halves and check the correlation between the results from each half. Is the research question clear? What content is each question designed to measure? Is the question to measure an attitude, an attribute, a belief, a behavior, knowledge? If the question is designed to tap attitude or beliefs, what do you want to know about the attitude belief? Is it the direction? Is it the extremity? Is it the intensity? Is each question reliable, valid, sufficiently sensitive to variation, likely to achieve a good response rate, have the same meaning for all respondents relevant to the research question? Is the specific wording for each question suitable? What type of response format does the questionnaire item require? Is it open or is it closed? What level of measurement do you want the item to achieve? Is it nominal, just the names or categories? Is it ordinal, the ranks or is it interval, numeric? For closed questions, which type of closed format is required? Is it rating? Is it scores? Is it ranking? Or is it a checklist? How will the non-commental responses be handled? Will a middle responsible be included? Will a don't know option be available? Are the response categories exhaustive or inclusive, exclusive, balanced? Are clear instructions provided throughout the questionnaire? How will the respondents indicate their responses? Is there sufficient space on the questionnaire? Are any skips clear and simple to follow? Does the order of questionnaire conform to the principles of question order? How will coding be handled? Will questions be pre-coded? How will open-ended questions be coded? How will data be entered into the computer? Is the coding layout in the questionnaire sufficiently clear as to minimize data entry errors? Will pilot testing be used? If not, why? Which types of pilot testing will be employed? Will it be declared? Will it be undeclared? Will it be both? and do the questions work. Thanks for staying along friends. As always, it was a delight having you here. 
I'll be back with another video very soon. Till then, have a great time.